Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in Moral Laws by Edgar Sheffield Brightman, published in 1933. We're going to take a look at pages 156 to 183, and we'll take a look at the law of the best possible in three moments. And we will continue on by examining these uh, principles abbreviated under the three major categorical laws. Let's begin with block one. Under definition, the self should will the best possible values for, values for every situation, for values that would not exist unless we posit them. The law of the best possible is the driving force of the axiological law. It is the critical creation of value. It combines both energy and mercy towards others, says Brightman. Now, best as a concept consists of a concrete act which is consistent with the ideal system of value. The ideal of an inexhaustible realization and it abbreviates its own subconcepts of obligation, preference, and systematic connection. Now, the law of the best possible considered as historical. The best possible always involves a, a historical series of experimental positings. It is the mean between the excess and defect. Best necessarily calls up the concept of oughtness. And then Brightman introduces a, a key term for him, the impossibility of the ideal. Because the ought always goes beyond what can be actualized. It's an anticipatory concept. The impossible ideal supplies our eschatological direction of praxis. It is Christ saying, be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect. Every actualization of moral praxis creates moral growth and power in the self. And in the return moment, we actually see a surplus of value that we uh, did not anticipate. So we're looking at a anticipatory concept and the impossibility of the ideal that we posit as our concrete act of praxis when trying to implement the law of the best possible realization. And that takes us on to block two because if we're talking about an anticipatory concept in positing the impossibility of the ideal we must consider the, the idea of the will to believe. And we begin with preliminary faith. The self's passionate nature of conviction must decide between propositions whenever intellectual analysis is unable to do so. So there are times when we posit a concrete action of ministry when perhaps rationally it doesn't look possible. We still anticipate it and we still posit that concrete act out of conviction out of preliminary faith. Brightman calls this the sign bearing truth. Veracity is an intrinsic, intrinsic value. We have an obligation to communicate the truth in our concrete praxis. And that means we communicate a significant truth or a sign bearing truth. And the best possible confines us to the whole range of moral obligation. That leads to the law of specification. We are doing both. We are acting in an act of praxis. We are also reflectively communicating value during praxis. We are using language. We are communicating sign bearing truth with our system of ideal values our picture of the kingdom of God. So in block two, note three, preliminary faith and sign bearing truth equal reaching the law of specification. The self's formal value model needs to be focused down to specific concrete relevance. Evaluative study of the situation is demanded. We relate the universal picture of kingdom to the particular concrete relevant 
need. Personalistic laws address the, prob the problem for subjectivity. The law of specification addresses the problem for objectivity. So we need to take a look at this law of specification in block three. If you look at block three, in note one, we look at event participation. In the moral life, the essential subject matter is personal will. Each concrete value act contributes to the holistic system of valued life. We must have due regard for the present, says Brightman. Every situation is a structured presence of humanity, circumstance, and event participation that asks for our cooperative effort. It is a tendency of soteriological event, saving event, that desires to imprint finitude or the sensate through our cooperative participation with spirit. And the law of specification is the guide to our present concrete obligatory action of praxis. Brightman looks at the concept of loyalty. The external situation should be evaluated concerning what is and what is not in our power. The ideal of local loyalty must be subordinate to universal loyalty. loyalty. We are loyal to the universality of the kingdom of God before any local loyalty. We look at the relation between individual will and given situation. We must consider individual will and the givenness of the situation. And that means we take up something called the law of the inclusive end. We take up the eschatological viewpoint. We are living in eschatological time. It's an eschatological time that stretches eschatological space. We must seek to actualize a coherent range of value. And inclusive end includes pluralistic content and singularity of form. A plurality of content and a singularity of form. It introduces the law of life plan. We are working out a complexity in synthesis in a form identified as kingdom of God. A form of kingdom values in a coherent system. That's a better way to say it. Kingdom values, kingdom ideals joined in a coherent system that we want to imprint on externality and internalize in the subjective mindset. So this lesson takes a look at the law of the best possible. We seek the best possible actualization of kingdom that we can achieve. And that means we take up an anticipatory standpoint. We take up uh, the impossibility of the ideal that is posited out of conviction, not really rationally deducible. We don't really see it sometimes in our sensate reality, but we anticipate an impossibility of the ideal. Therefore, our praxis positing is a concrete anticipation of the impossibility of the ideal to realize the kingdom of God in sensate reality. That means we believe in a very pr preliminary way with an already held faith in our heart and in our mind called the state of mind or the state of body. Our mindset already possesses a preliminary faith. So out of that preliminary faith, we already carry in our long-term memory a sign bearing truth of the system that we already carry of the values of kingdom of God in a coherent relationship that pushes us onto and empowers us onto applying the law of specification, which is a concrete application. We concretely apply the law of specification because we are seeking to realize the inclusive end of the person of Jesus Christ. We are living in his future. We are participating in his future. We are in him and he is in us. We participate in the personality of Christ, the personality of the divine, the personality of spirit. Remember, Brightman says we participate in the personality of spirit. To bring forward 
that law of inclusive end. That law of inclusive end, which is an eschatological concrete working toward actualization of the coherent ideal model of values, which is our picture of kingdom of God. So Brightman gives us, I think, more specific content concerning that overall system. We've already looked at the overall system. We looked at his overall phenomenology of ethics. It's always phenomenology. It always begin with the empirical, but it's the empirical plus consciousness for Brightman. It's the empirical plus, plus the full movement of consciousness of humanity. Therefore, it's truly phenomenology. We have the overall system. Now we're examining the concrete elements that are abbreviated under the categories of, of logic, structure, data, and system. Logic, structure, data, and system are those four areas that gave us the overall phenomenology. But eventually it, would, it took us to that logic of faith. Experimental positing, outgoing desire of the ideals of kingdom, and interpretive construction. Well, we know that axiological law is uh, from the Greek concept of axiao, to posit, to posit the meaningful and the true and the value of kingdom. So the axiological does abbreviate the law of the best possible realization of kingdom that we hope to actualize. So he gives us the three moments of the law of the best possible, which means we take up a will to believe as conviction, which anticipates the impossibility of the ideal and the law of the inclusive end. We anticipate the impossibility of the ideal and an eschatological inclusive end, which is in the New Testament called the future of Jesus Christ. So we get uh, very, very powerful, specific content that is abbreviated under that overall system that we had a few lessons ago. This is specific content abbreviated in that overall phenomenology. He's breaking it down. He's giving us step-by-step -step data for uh, the phenomenology that he has already given us in the first four chapters. Now we get the principles abbreviated, abbreviated under the categorical laws. Remember, it's a system of categorical laws abbreviating conceptual principles. And that's going to wrap up this lesson on 156 to 183 on axiological law and the abbreviated law of the best possible.